Hello everyone, um, what we got here? We've got a uh, nice sparkly new Canaries Trust banner and oh, Capital Canaries. There you are, there's a few uh, further down the uh, pit there. The city stand, Geoffrey Watling stand as well. Um, good evening to you, welcome to Carrow Road and the, 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 the mist is creeping in. Um, it's a winning mist <laughs> because Norwich, Norwich City have won here one nil. The goal coming um, coming late, um, as you'd probably expect um, after a, a game that actually really did kind of live live up to what I was hoping it would be. Even if this had finished uh, nil nil against Swansea, um, I saw enough to really enjoy it and get stuck into because uh, it was a, a cracking game. I was slightly afraid that both teams might try and cancel each other out, and it was quite clear from about. 20 seconds into the game that that wasn't going to be the case both sides obviously play progressive good tempo football when they're really at it um, they're both reasonably tight this season uh, they both can create chances and they've both got some some really good quality for this level especially um, dotted around the pitch uh, they play different form uh, different shape and different formation so there were there were always going to be a few holes and they just went for it both of both teams they had 10 15 minute spells each they interchanged it although Norwich probably didn't create um the clearest um opportunities and made Freddie Woodman work as much as they should have done um they did actually create probably the better uh, opp opportunities in in spaces certainly in the first half I then think um but that said Swansea came closest in the first half Andre Ives had a, coming back off the post and certainly in the second half Swansea had two glorious chances through Jamal Lowe who um, you know, Tim Cool made two very good saves from them both, but the finishing wasn't wasn't good enough. Um, in the first one, Jamal Lowe has hit it straight at Tim Cool's chest, and the second one was directly above him. It's a good, really good, strong arm, um, but he, in fairness, Lowe shouldn't really be putting the ball anywhere, given the space, the position he was in, and the time he had to take the shots. Uh, shouldn't be picking out the goalkeeper. Um, he should be putting it somewhere where where Tim Cool can't reach it. And having spent you know the last twelve months. 15 months whichever before now uh, or before September watching and uh, reporting on Premier League football and its latest incarnation um, it's another kind of nod to just how different uh, the levels are um, uh, and, and after all those moments Norwich finally got a, a chance and they took it they were clinical they, they made their chance pay and it was beautifully worked by Bali Mumba down this flank here this patch of grass just doing my weather weather um, weather 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 report weather forecast weather forecasting god my brain stopped working um this patch of grass is where Bali Mumba dominated when he came on um it was a double change from Daniel Farker to take off uh, Shemistrov Poiheta and Jacob Sorensen he wasn't actually he was a doubt before the game but wasn't necessarily struggling it was a it was a tactical change to get Josh Martin and Bali Mumba on um to sort of rejig re the, the Norwich left side and um it really worked. I mean, I thought Bali was superb uh, going forwards. I, I, I sort of said he looked a bit overexcited at Bristol City, which is probably a bit harsh, actually. But today, fantastic. He, his use of the ball was, was brilliant. He, um, he, he would step over, but he, he could go outside or inside. It was brilliant. You just didn't know which way he was going to, to going to go and uh, apologies it escapes me but the Swansea uh, right back who was up against him just did not have a clue how to deal with him um, and it was brilliant because the quality of his cutbacks as well it was from absolutely from the, um, the the Daniel Farker school of how to bring in a low cross in for the strikers that Norwich have um, obviously there's an unpredictability there because people won't have seen Bali Mumba playing in that position I mean I don't think Daniel Farker's seen him play in that position that much because it was a risk but um just exceptional and uh, brilliant to see and, and to be honest I'd, I'd be very tempted to start him um, next game out if, if he needed to but uh, it'll be a difficult challenge up at Middlesbrough and I think Norwich will know what they're going to get in that the other side of the international break and a Neil Warnock team but um, what it did do is kind of re reinforce the work by Limumba has done in the squad behind the scenes since he arrived he's um, there's a lot of promise there and they, they really really like what they've seen and I think that's what's earning him these chances um, at, at, at a level he hasn't played at before so 
or well, certainly I don't think he played there much for Sunderland. It, it may have been a handful of performances when, in a team that was really struggling. So this is this is different gravy for him, and um, and that was great. And in fairness, Josh Martin's kind of been overshadowed a little bit by that, but again, he offered a freshness and he kept the ball well and um, and and did okay in what was a, a pretty high pressured situation to come into because. As I said, both sides very good. Both sides on this evidence more than capable of finishing in the top six. I would say Swansea are well up there in terms of uh, what I saw from Bournemouth and Brentford. So um, possibly slightly over-reliant on Andre Ayew, I think, maybe. Had Andre Ayew had had either of those two chances, I imagine that we wouldn't have been talking about a 1-0 win for Norwich. Um, but they will be right up there, which of course makes this a fantastic win for Norwich and puts a little bit of... Um, added gloss into the goalless draw against Millwall which you can kind of forgive because Norwich did enough to have won that game even though um, you know Millwall were, were good and, and really tight on the on the on the night as well um, so yeah I mean and Norwich have had to do this with a with a slightly patched up squad there were quite a few um, players who were doubts there were ones who were missing Lucas Ben Gibson neither played today Todd Campbell wasn't in the squad either it does sound from Daniel Farker that none of those are particularly troublesome and then they should all be back come um, uh, come the other side of the international break which is obviously really encouraging too um, and if Norwich can uh, it's just a, it's just however the players who go away um, cope really with the international break I suppose um, but yeah, it was just a really good game, really, really fiercely contested. There were some great um, great performances in, in that sort of tough environment. I haven't described the rest of the goal, um, which, as I said, is Bailey Mumbers cross, wonderful little setup from Emmy Wendier, and, and Marco Stiepenman's finish was just purely accurate. It's his first goal since, I can't remember exactly, but certainly the championship winning season. Um, so towards the end of that, um, it was a lovely finish left foot I think curling away just in off the post um, I was half expecting it to go wide from our angle so it's just wonderful to see it ping in off the post real piece of, of clinical finishing and quality that was always probably going to be needed to settle the game and, and it did and uh, that's now a fifth win in seven for Norwich they are second I believe in the table as things stand which is how it will be over the next um, fortnight which is of course great news and they're unbeaten in, in seven so um, ticking along very nicely it's a, it's a very promising start with players to come back still you know a decently fit squad and, and all that sort of stuff so that all does bode uh, bode really well for, for what happens um, going forwards uh, I think I'm pretty much there really it was um, it, there was a half time change uh, from Steve Cooper in uh, Swansea's formation that I thought did actually help them create a few extra chances but apparently that was a, a force change because Kyle Norton had a had a, a hamstring um, tweak so although Daniel Farker then had to kind of react to that um, it's interesting he, I, I'm assuming um, Steve Cooper wouldn't have made that change at half time had it not been for Kyle, uh, Kyle Norton's um, injury issues um, so so there we go um, Norwich were maybe slightly lucky with a penalty call in the second half and I have a feeling that Swansea are pretty annoyed about it watching it on the replay I don't know it I have seen them given and I do think it, in, at the moment the first moment I saw it that it was, was a free kick uh, sorry a penalty um, then on replays I'm not so sure because I think um, I can't remember who it was who went down now um, but uh, it might have been Bidwell but um, it did seem to make a little bit too much of it um, but there we go. I feel like I'm missing a whole wedge, but I, I'm not sure. As I said, some good performances there. It's just a, it's just a cracking victory, really, for Norwich going forwards um, and uh, should make for a, for a decent um, break for those not going away. I think we all just need to keep our fingers crossed now that those who are going away uh, keep safe, keep well, and come back in, um, in, a good, uh, in a good place because going to Middlesbrough straight off the international break is going um, to be a tough old... Uh, tough old challenge that and a, a, a tough old poke so to speak um but there we go um i think that's it um don't forget i'm gonna have a few days off hope you don't mind that over the international break um, i hope you're looking after each other and staying safe and well in these uh, strange old times and uh i will see you at, um, up in the northeast um on the other side of the international break keep those fingers crossed and uh, take care of yourselves and post any comments you want. I'll read through them all. And of course, The Athletic, um, there'll be a few bits and pieces going up that I've already put together in my absence. So make sure you check those out uh, too. Uh, in the meantime, keep safe and well. <laughs>